I wanted to do a video today that goes over a topic that not all concealed carriers might think about uh, when they're choosing their carry gun. Uh, I recently injured my left hand a couple different times. Uh, about two and a half weeks ago I sprained my thumb really badly and I carry a gun every day and since I usually carry a semi-automatic like a little LCP or a PPKS, uh, maybe the USP if I have a good cover garment. Um, I had a really difficult time loading and unloading the semi-automatics because being two-handed people, uh, you hold your semi-auto with your right hand and you rack the slide with your left. Well, when your left hand is injured, you can't just grab onto the slide. Well, you can, it just hurts a lot. And it was too uncomfortable for me to um, load and unload semi-autos. So I started carrying a revolver, which was much easier to load and unload. I had the idea that I'd do this kind of video and uh, show how easy it is to load and unload semi-automatics and revolvers uh, with just one hand. Uh, and I put off the video because my hand got better and I was eventually able to rack the slide on the LCP just fine. But yesterday I had an unfortunate hatchet accident and cut my hand pretty well. And now I can't rack the slide on semi-autos anymore. So I figured now would be the best time to do the video. So let's assume that I, the left hand is out of commission. It's been injured and you can only use your right hand. Or if you're a lefty, your right hand's out of commission. You can only use your left. So if I want to check to see if this USP is loaded, um, there's no useful loaded chamber indicator on this thing. So I can kind of finagle it with one hand and I can see, yep, that's, that's clear. But if I want to rack the slide open, I have to take it and use the sights and do the von Stauffenberg maneuver and lock the slide open. I can drop a mag and then attempt to load it. It's uh, definitely not as easy as normal. I only put a few in. Don't need to fully load it for this. But then that can go back in the mag well. That clicks in place. And we're ready to go. So USP is pretty easy. Big tactile controls. Um, big 45 caliber rounds are easy to load. So uh, let's see how difficult it is to unload. I'm going to drop our mag. That's easy. Now here's the tricky part. Uh, we're going to have to do our von Stauffenberg maneuver again. And I say von Stauffenberg maneuver because uh, Colonel von Stauffenberg was a German, uh, pretty sure he's an army officer in World War II, uh, who is most famous for his uh, failed assassination attempt of Hitler. And he lost his left hand in North Africa and he carried a PBK and to load it he would rest the rear sight against a table and force down the frame to uh, eject shells or load new ones in. But we have our USP with a round in the chamber and uh, the only way to get the round out with one hand is to use our von Stauffenberg maneuver and lock it out and then to lock back the slide, we have to empty the rounds out. Put down our mag. Back like that. Another von Stauffenberg, and we're open again. So it's a kind of a tedious process with the USP, um, but not nearly as difficult as I suspect it's going to be with the PPK. With the PPK, you got the much heavier recoil spring. And we're also dealing with a little smaller round that might be harder to get into the magazine. Okay, we just saw how the USP would work if you only have one hand to operate it. Uh, so now let's go on to uh, another very popular carry gun, 
um, one that not a whole lot of people carry, but uh, it's still a very classic design. A lot of people still do carry these, including myself. Uh, to see if this is loaded, uh, this has a loaded chamber indicator, which is down, which tells me it's unloaded. But just to confirm, we're going to drop the mag, mag's empty, and then using our von Stauffenberg maneuver again. Here, let's see if I can get a view of this. Going to rest the rear sight down here and rack back the slide. And since there's no mag, it doesn't lock back. So we can put the mag back in. And we're locked back. So she's empty. Bring them back up. Now to load this, uh, we're going to do this a couple different ways. Since there's no slide release on here, I'm going to uh, load this one twice. One with the slide already open, and then one from the slide closed. From the slide open, it's going to be pretty easy to load this. From the slide closed, it's going to be pretty difficult. So let's get some 380 in here. Far more difficult to get the rounds in because the mag doesn't stand upright on the table. This is this is painfully difficult. You would never imagine it would be so hard to load a magazine with one hand until you actually have to do it. So there's three, and just put five in. Oh, come on. Fingers get tired. But this is what you have to deal with. If you've only got one hand to work with, uh, all these guns can be drawn with one hand from the holster fired with one hand, but loading the things, it's pretty difficult. So I got five in the mag, going into the mag well. Okay, and from here, since there's no slide release, you can't just thumb it down, we have to do a von Stauffenberg again. And then close, and we got hammer back, and we can drop the hammer with the decocker. And so now, you can see the loaded chamber indicator is up meaning we're loaded. So to unload this, drop our mag. So, have to do a von Stauffenberg. And that didn't eject, so we have to do it again. Okay. So that's an issue with the PPK, is that it doesn't like to eject uh, loaded rounds if you're not turning the gun sideways. So uh, following our rules of firearm safety, this is a hot gun. All I have to do is pull the trigger and this will fire. So you just have to be very careful with it as you try to unload it. And this is nearly impossible to get unloaded. So big problem if you want to unload your PPK with just one hand. You can't do it. Let's see if it helps at all having an empty mag in there. I doubt it will, but it might. Okay, I got it that time. So, I guess the trick to uh, unloading the PPK with the von Stauffenberg maneuver is you have to have the empty mag in it. So, second part to the PPK is we're going to load this up, load the magazine up, and then try to load it from a closed magazine. So, once again, trying to get the mag loaded. This works a little better than the other way I was trying. Still not too easy. OK. 
Come on. There we go. Okay, so from a hammer that's down, put the mag in, click it, and then we have to do our von Stauffenberg all the way down and racked. We got our loaded chamber indicator is up. We're loaded and hot, decock, and we're ready to carry. So it, it's doable with the PPK, not nearly as easy as the USP, but then again, your PPK is going to be far more concealable than your USP is. So, so far we've seen two guns with raised rear sights where you can do a von Stauffenberg maneuver if you only have one hand available. But we're going to move on to this little LCP, which has a radius rear sight that's not going to be very easy to do that maneuver on. So, yeah, that one's still loaded, so empty this mag, put the empty mag back in, do another von Stauffenberg. Okay, yep, and that ejected the round. So yeah, if you want to unload PPK with one hand with the von Stauffenberg, you have to put your empty mag back in, otherwise it would be impossible. Okay, so check to see if our LCP is loaded. Uh, we can drop our mag and then kind of finagle the slide a little bit and see that there's no shiny stuff in the chamber. But again, it's not a very clear way of seeing these. You can't actually get the slide back all the way with one hand without getting your hand in front of the muzzle or fingers in the way. It's just not very easy. So let's try a von Stauffenberg with our empty mag in place. Let's see if we can do that. So there's no last round hold open on LCP. So what you have to do to lock back the slide is put up your slide lock as you're doing the von Stauffenberg. So not easy at all. Can't do it. Show you what I'm dealing with. So the problem is, is you can't get enough leverage on the back of this rear sight because it keeps slipping off. And I'm just using this uh, particle board table here. Of course, you could use your dining room table or something, but whoever owns that table probably won't be too happy with the damage. And you should be able to clear jams with your carry gun pretty easily and having a nice 90 degree surface even if it is particle board is still better than like a curb or the edge of a sidewalk or something so yeah it, it's almost impossible to lock the slide back with one hand on the LCP you just can't get it back far enough to where you can push up this lever. So that's an issue with the LCP and I carry this quite a lot. So I, I haven't been carrying this as much lately because of that, because I, I simply can't load the thing. So let's see if I can load it up with live ammo rather than just checking to see if it's clear. And there is no um, loaded chamber indicator on the LCP, uh, at least not a tactile one like the PPK. You're supposed to be able to see the edge of the brass through the back of the chamber here, but I don't, I don't trust it very much. Um, if your brass is off-colored, it might look unloaded when it in fact is, and I prefer a, an actual tactile indicator rather than a visual indicator. So we can put our loaded mag into the gun. So I'm going to try the von Stauffenberg again. And it's, I don't have a lot of hope for it. So all the way back. Okay, I felt it locked back. And here we go, a perfect example of an LCP malfunction. Uh, this isn't a spring problem. 
Um, this isn't a lubrication problem. Uh, this is just if you don't slingshot the slide forward, uh, you're going to have a failure to load the first round. But you should be able to just push this forward and load. Which, that's fine. I haven't had any issues while shooting. It's just on a first round loading, um, it'll hang up like that. So, not too difficult to load. Um, definitely easier to get the rounds in the magazine than the PPK, but uh, not having that angle on the rear sight made it really difficult to do the von Stauffenberg and get the round, uh, get the slide all the way back. So we've got a live round in here, and so now we've got to get it out, use our empty mag, but since this doesn't have a last round hold open, this is not going to be fun to try to get it out. Well, actually, it ejected just fine. Popped right out. So, you know, those, the semi-autos have their issues with loading with one hand. Um, but we have one more gun here that I've been carrying a lot more lately. And that's because it's, it's a, a really user-friendly design for somebody with one hand. Hey, look. It's unloaded. That's pretty easy. I didn't have to rack the slide. Just grip it. Cylinder release. Look at that. It's unloaded. Want to load it? Just grab a couple rounds. Stick them in. Three, four, five. And we're ready to go. Put in a little holster. Nothing fancy about this holster at all. But we can finagle it in there some way, like so. And there we go. What did that take? 10, 15 seconds, and we had a safety checked, then loaded, then holstered gun in like 15 seconds. And that's one of the advantages to revolvers. Unload it, just dump the shells out. If they're fired, hit them out with the ejector. can all be done with one hand. So that's a major advantage to revolvers. Um, for most situations, yeah, automatics are probably going to be uh, a little bit better. If you want the capacity, um, yeah, you're not going to fit 13 rounds of 45 ACP into any frame revolver. Um, an end frame will only hold what, like six rounds of 45? And you can fit 13 inside this USP that weighs half as much. But uh, revolvers do have their place out there. And uh, you can fit five rounds of 357 Magnum in this little gun that can seals just about the same as a PPKS. Um, the only thickness to it is the cylinder here, and the rest of it is thinner than the PPK. So that's uh, one of a few reasons why I like revolvers. I'm not going to say that revolvers are the best in every situation because they absolutely aren't. But right now, with one hand at a commission, just using the right hand, um, I can't load, unload, and safety check semi-automatics uh, reliably enough to consider them as uh, practical defensive weapons right now. Once this heals up and my hand's better, yeah, I'll go back to semi-autos, but uh, right now, revolver is the way to go. Easy to check, easy to load, easy to unload, and um, it debatable, but revolvers are simply more reliable than semi-autos uh, because you don't have to deal with uh, bad ammo. If you have a, a dud or a light strike, you just pull the trigger again, on double action and go the next round and it'll fire. Whereas with a semi-auto you're gonna have to rack that round out. And with one hand you can't rack it out if you're just standing on a street somewhere. You're gonna have to find a hard surface to rack the slide against. But hopefully this uh, gave you a little more insight into the semi-auto versus revolver debate. Um, for some people revolvers are better, for some people semi-autos are better. Um, 
for me right now, can't use my left hand, so uh, I'm going with a revolver. In a couple weeks, I'll probably be carrying this again. That's all for today. Thanks for watching, and if you have any ideas for future videos, feel free to leave those in the comments below, and thanks for subscribing. All these factors must be considered as we plan for the survival of our homes, our families, and our nation in the nuclear age.